Without congressional action, it's anticipated that we will default on the U.S. government debt and its obligations as of June 1. Let's talk about the seven paths forward from here and what that might mean for the market. Welcome to The Trending Report, brought to you by USA Financial. The Trending Report is a bi-weekly show that aims to focus on the trend lines rather than the headlines. Each episode features commentary around the state of the market, as well as other factors that may impact your personal finances. The host of The Trending Report is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. The Trending Report is educational and not intended as personal financial advice. Hey, welcome back to the Trainer Report. Today, we are going to make complexity simple by discussing the seven most likely paths that we have in front of us for the U.S. hitting its debt limit once again, hitting that debt ceiling, actually going through that debt ceiling as of January 2023. And then we will also discuss uh, the market situations and looking at our data as of May 8th, which was last Friday, and how those two things kind of uh, cross paths as we look at the market and what's going on uh, politically with the government hitting its debt limits. So with that being said, let's jump right in. So this is a great graphic that I located in the New York Times, as you can see. And I think that this uh, does a pretty good job of kind of road mapping for you the way things could progress. Uh, and it really just depends on what direction all these things happen. So right now, our current situation as it stands is the U.S. hit its debt limit as of January 2023. And so what's happening right now is the government is taking what's called extraordinary measures. Uh, basically, they're, they're juggling their bills, to put it in a uh, in a householding kind of scenario. They're juggling the payment of their bills uh, to kind of stretch the budget out, to stretch things out, uh, to make sure that they're at least under today's situation, not defaulting on any of that debt. However, Janet Yellen, who is the Treasury Secretary, as you very well might know, um, Janet Yellen has said that June 1 is what's called the X date, basically meaning that these extraordinary measures will do us no good past June one. So between now and June 1, that's when the rubber hits the road. That's when we're going to see a lot of the gyrations taking place. And if the government is able to come to a conclusion before that X date, before that June 1 date, it's likely going to land in one of three spots. Either a resolution is passed and we move forward. So they raise the debt limit and we simply move forward. Now, the problem here is uh, that the Republicans want some cuts on spending infused into that agreement, whereas the White House and the Democrats want a no-strings-attached approach where they can just continue to receive the funding and spend it as they see fit. So the idea that those two things are going to uh, come to agreement is difficult. Not impossible, but difficult, uh, because Republicans are staunchly dug in that that once again, spending cuts need to be part of the deal. Uh, and yet the, the flip side with the Democrats is that they want a no strings attached scenario. So that means that we then might move on to situation number two. Situation number two would be a temporary suspension, uh, meaning that they would give a slight increase in the debt ceiling, allowing the government to continue to maneuver and to continue to operate for a short window of time, maybe a few months or, or something to that effect. Um, so that they can continue to negotiate and try to get to a real solution, uh, a, an actual resolution to pass. Now, the issue here is in many ways, uh, I would imagine anyway, that the Democrats probably don't want to see a temporary suspension pushing its way into the 2024 election cycle, because that could cloud things up for President Biden quite, uh, quite uh, significantly, I would assume. And most likely that would probably bode against the Democrats, although you could argue maybe it bodes against the Republicans. Obviously, they're going to take two sides of that coin and debate them, but nonetheless, it could cloud the election, uh, and that might wish to be avoided as well. And then the third opportunity or situation, uh, possibility, probably a better way to say that, would be a discharge position. Now, Candidly, I don't think that's very likely, but a discharge position would be where the House has a majority and then uh, passes that on and kind of pushes it through 
Congress <clears throat> with um, with bypassing the normal uh, the normal resolution process. Now that means that five Republicans would have to jump uh, jump the aisle to go with the Democrats to have that majority to push that through. And uh, my my assumption would be that that is probably not likely. Um, so if none of those three things happen, so all of those, by the way, would bring us down this path, right? So if we pass a timely deal, uh, then we find ourselves raising the debt limit. Or if we do a, a temporary uh, suspension, we're not really getting an agreement, but then we're coming down this way with a temporary suspension and getting ourselves uh, to the uh, eventually, hopefully to raising that debt limit without a default. Now, if that doesn't happen, that means that we're letting the X date pass and we don't have an agreement in place. Now, there you're seeing two major things could happen. Number one, prioritizing debt payments, meaning trying to keep uh, the American citizens covered, so to speak, paying Social Security checks, uh, paying the military salary, keeping things afloat and juggling those debts or prioritizing those debts. So a little different than the extraordinary measures. Really here now you're prioritizing. You know you're going to default on certain things. So you're just trying to prioritize which things you're going to default on first, which things you're going to default on last. Now, <clears throat> that has some possibilities. But what would uh, also be a more, uh, st nah, stable is not the right word, but would be a more um, categorized approach to what it really means to be in that situation, <clears throat> it would be to stop paying bills, accept interest in principle. In other words, making sure that we cover the debt on the bonds, the treasury bonds that are uh, in issue, and that we're paying uh, our our global companions, the other countries that have basically bought our bonds, that we're making sure that those things are covered first. So in many ways, what you would probably could almost do is envision a flip-flopping of number four and five here, where they're going to stop paying all bills except interest in principle, get that interest in principle covered, and then circle back and maybe start covering some social security, some military, some higher priority items. But the more of the high priority items you cover, the shorter the window that you can continue to pay interest in principle as well. So that would be uh, nonetheless a juggling act. So that's when when you get into this, the different variations of the Treasury deciding which payments to default on and how that's going to get approached. Now, there are a couple alternatives being floated. Um, they seem a bit far fetched, um, but it doesn't mean they won't be discussed. One is for the government to literally mint a $1 trillion coin, kind of a fictitious coin, for lack of a better word, mint a $1 trillion coin, and then deposit it at the Federal Reserve, uh, to deposit it with the feds to basically free up cash, to create cash, uh, which would, you know, uh, which would uh, water down the cash that you have in your pocket in your bank accounts, but create cash to make these payments with. The other would be, the Biden administration has floated this concept uh, to ignore the debt limit, continue to operate as if there is no debt limit under the assumption that the 14th Amendment would cover such because it states that the, uh, the U.S. must honor its debts. So lots of things happen here. If I was placing my bet today, I think what's most likely going to happen is right here, at least in the near term. I think there's going to be a temporary suspension, and then I think they're going to continue to negotiate and try to get a deal. So the closer we get to the deadlines, the uh, the less likely some of these things look like they're going to happen on a timely basis, then the more effect this will have on the markets. So we move to the markets now and look at capitalization over the last one year. So this is going from large cap down to small cap. What we're starting to see is more red. You'll see all this red here, which means they're starting to tip bearish. And most specifically, it's the small cap and the mid caps, mid cap 400, small cap 600, which are tipping bearish most, most uh, heavily. And then we have the large caps up here at the top of the list with more green on the board and the overall market coming here in the middle. So as you can see, uh, here is our, our macro trending, our longest term view. We're seeing that it started to go bullish back in here, which is this stretch, 
But overall, you're seeing a ranging market where we're just kind of bouncing along over time. Now we get a pretty similar view right now in the sectors. Uh, again, we're seeing certain sectors lifting the markets, certain sectors pulling the market down, energy, financials, real estate, materials down here at the bottom of the list. And up at the top, we got information tech, consumer staples, uh, telecom, uh, consumer discretionary, and so on. We're seeing a similar look here. We got green down here with our macro, uh, which is coming in like through this stretch. Uh, we've got this most recent bit right here where we're seeing it turn bearish. That's the nano uh, coming in right here. Uh, but again, once again, we're seeing a ranging market coming across here. Uh, so it's having a difficult time identifying its direction. <laughs> Then if we look internationally, we see a little more strength internationally. You know that you'll notice over here there's more green on the board. Uh, we are still starting to see uh, some of the things up here towards the top tends to be European, uh, international dividends. So, so basically value and European uh, up at the top. And then we're seeing um, Pacific and Latin America and emerging markets down here at the bottom, which tend to be a little bit more like the small caps, kind of like what we're seeing here in the U.S. as well. Now, we've got some more strength with this upward trend being reflected down here in the macro as we were just looking at, uh, but we are also seeing in the overall market right here, the overall international market, we are seeing a bit of a bearish turn right here uh, at, the, uh, at the nano level, the, the most uh, microscopic view that we take. So here it looks a little bit more like a V, not so much ranging as it is more of a V that we're seeing in the international space. And then finally, when we look at bonds, you've got a lot more green on the board. Uh, now that could change pretty dramatically based on what we started the conversation with as it relates to government debt. If the government uh, uh, defaults on its debt, you are going to see this board turn red like instantaneously because that will create a real problem in the bond market because that's the debt uh, for interest and principal they would be defaulting on is the debt owed on these government bonds. Uh, but from a macro standpoint, again, we were seeing uh, a downtrend. And then right here, uh, it actually starts its uptrend. So again, we've got a little bit more of a V, kind of like we saw internationally. And in the micro, or nano, I should say, we are seeing green, which is this tiny little spot right here that just started going green uh, as well. So the bonds are showing some strength, but uh, that's going to be yet to be seen based on where the government debt talks move in the next month or so. Thanks again for listening to this episode of The Trending Report, powered by USA Financial. We invite you to visit usafinancial.com to find out more about our work with independent advisors and their clients all around the country. Any projections, targets, or estimates in this report are forward-looking statements and are based on the firm's research, analysis, and assumptions. Due to the rapidly changing market conditions and the complexity of investment decisions, supplemental information and other sources may be required to make informed investment decisions. All expressions of opinion are subject to change without notice. Clients should seek financial advice regarding the appropriateness of investing in any security or investment strategy discussed.